Hey, hello everybody. This is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. And this is Sunday. Uh, and for quite a while now on Sundays, we've been doing character studies. And if you haven't seen the previous episodes, they're uploaded on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. Uh, so far, we've studied uh, Adam and Eve, Satan, uh, Noah, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. Now we're studying the character known as Job. And we've already covered, uh, uh, like we're into the 15th chapter now. So if you haven't seen the previous studies, I, I hope you will go back and watch those so you'll get more context. But uh, we're going to pick up today with uh, chapter 15, verse 15. Uh, first, let me ask uh, Brother Eric to introduce himself and say hi to everybody. Hello. Thank you very much, Brother Luke. And hello, everybody. It's me, Dalmo. And uh, it's good to be here. And uh, I think it would, it's awesome that we may be doing this every day of the week. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Aren't you going to introduce, in, in introduce your beloved companion? Uh, I invited Tonto to join us, but uh, he said he might pop in for a cameo. But this is Rosie, uh, my little uh, partner in crime. Okay, back to you. <laughs> hold, hold Rosie up a little bit so I can see her. <clears throat> oh, oh, I thought she was already... Taking most of the, she always takes most of the bed, and so I figured she was taking most of the camera shot too. Yeah. Can you see her now? Yeah, she is adorable. And what a, what a wonderful thing that the Lord has given us these animals as companions. Oh yes, there's a great story behind this uh, dog, and she was given to me by the senior living member of uh, the almond tree family. And this dog has been a great blessing to me since I received her. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. All right. Okay, uh, I'm going to read the uh, KJV first, as is my custom. Uh, and then I'll, I'll read it also in the Amplified, because uh, I, it's easier for me to understand. Uh, but uh, starting with uh, verse 15, chapter 15, it says, uh, Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints. Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. But how much more abominable and filthy is man, which drinketh iniquity like water. I will show thee, hear me, and, th and that which I have seen I will declare. Which wise men have told from their fathers and have not hid it? Unto whom all all the earth was given, and no stranger passed among them. The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. A dreadful sound is in his ears. In prosperity the destroyer shall come upon him. He believeth not that he shall, put, uh, shall return out of darkness, and he is waited for, for of the sword. He wandereth abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. Trouble and anguish shall make him afraid. They shall prevail against him as a king ready to, to the battle. For he stretcheth out his hand against God and strengtheneth himself against the Almighty. He runneth upon him, even on his neck, upon the thick bosses of his bucklers because he he covereth his face with his fatness and maketh collops of fat on his flanks and he dwelleth in desolate cities and in houses which no man inhabiteth which are ready to become heaps he shall not be rich neither shall his substance continue neither shall he prolong the perfection thereof upon the earth he shall not depart out of darkness the flame shall dry up his branches, and by the breath of his mouth shall he go away. Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity, for vanity shall be his recompense. 
it shall be accomplished before his time, and his branch shall not be green. He shall shake off his unripe grape as the vine, and shall cast off his flower as the olive. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, and shall fire and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. They conceive mischief and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepareth deceit. Uh, well, this is a, probably a perfect example of uh, to demonstrate why I need a modern translation to back up the KJV because uh, uh, I'm not going to pretend to understand all that right now. But uh, what, do you, what is your take on what we read as an overview? And then we're going to go through it verse by verse in the Amplified. Well, Brother Luke, uh, I'm just so excited that uh, we're doing these uh, every day now. And I thought it was Winston Wednesdays. And I was looking, I, I don't even know what chapter we're on. Uh, what chapter are we on again? Chapter chapter 15 of Job. Well, I, started uh, okay. with, I started with verse 15. That's where we left off at that point last time. <sighs> Well, uh, please forgive me for uh, being delinquent in that area. Okay, uh, continue on. If we if we go to back to the beginning of the chapter, um, in the um, in the amplified. It says, the title of this chapter is, um, Eliphaz says Job presumes much. Uh, it says, then Eliphaz the Temanite answered Job and said. So this chapter is Eliphaz answering Job's speech in the last chapter. And this chapter here is, is, has been, you know, Eliphaz's um, con con further condemnation of Job and blaming Job. Uh, and Job got fed up with it uh, in the last chapter. He gave his response that uh, 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 that he he was he doesn't believe he is to blame for for all these bad things happening to him. And uh, but his his so-called friends Eliphaz and the, the others they've continued to point the finger at Job and blame him for all his problems. So I'm going to uh, go through it one verse at a time now, and we'll start with, uh, let me see, the uh, verse 15. And this is, uh, again, Eliphaz continuing his tirade against Job. Behold, God puts no trust in his holy ones, the angels. Indeed, the heavens are not pure in his sight. How much less pure and clean is the one who is repulsive and corrupt, man who drinks unrighteousness and injustice like water? Well, that's pretty easy to understand, brother. Uh, and we know, we know that um, it is true that the scriptures say that um, the righteousness of man is like filthy rags in the sight of God. Uh, we know that is, is the truth. But we also know that we, we discussed in the previous chapter when, uh, uh, when we were listening to Job's answer, Job was expressing the belief that, yeah, um, all of us have sinned, but, but he, he believes God has taken his sin and put all his sin inside a bag and then sewn the bag shut. And because of his his faith in, in God. And this is this we find this is an Old Testament book, but it's a doctrine that is, has been applied in the Old Testament and, and in the New Testament. And that, and that is that if we have faith in God, then uh, God will forgive us. The sins are not paid for until the New Testament when Jesus dies for the world's sins. But uh, even Job knows that his sins are put in a bag and set aside, sealed up. Uh, and yet we see this belief here expressed by Telephaz that 
man is just all so, so horrible. And it is true, but God is so loving and merciful and forgiving and, and desiring a, a relationship with his, his creation that he is prepared to forgive us. Uh, so uh, what do you think about this, this beginning, this first verse here that I just read there, verse 15 and 16? Well, Brother Luke, I agree with you. Uh, Eliphaz sure nailed it this time. Uh, he was just pointing in the wrong direction uh, with his guns. Okay. Yeah. He's... Uh, El, uh, Job... Job has more understanding than Eliphaz and his friends. And that... Uh, he understands the love and mercy and forgiveness of God. Uh, and he, he, has, he does understand man's wretchedness, uh, but he, he, he also understands God's forgiveness. So in verse, uh, uh, this next verse 17, it's subtitled in the Amplified, What Eliphaz Has Seen of Life. Now, it's important that there's a lot of people that uh, you, you have a Bible and there's two things in the Bible. You have scripture, which are, are the chapters and verses. And, and then you have uh, sometimes editors put in titles for chapters, subtitles. They put in notes in the columns and the margins. And uh, these things are not scripture. It's the editors or the commentators or the translators uh, insertions. And sometimes these insertions are very helpful, but let's not trust them like we trust the scriptures. So the subtitle that we have here is what Eliphaz has seen of life. And in verse 17, it says, I will tell you, listen to me. And what have I seen? What I have seen, I will also declare. What wise men have freely told and have not hidden anything passed on to them from their fathers, to whom alone the land was given, and no stranger passed along, uh, passed among them, corrupting the truth. The wicked man rides with pain all his days, and numbered are the years stored up for him, the ruthless one. <coughs> okay, so we'll stop there and... Uh discuss that for a moment uh, but we've we've talked about oh my I, I, I have like 440 videos on my, I've uploaded on my YouTube channel I have actually probably hundreds and hundreds of other videos I've uploaded that other people have made that I've formed into playlists but the video that I've made and uploaded there's 430 of them and 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 Many, many times in those videos, um, uh, this point ha has, has been expressed uh, that uh, man uh, suffers uh, because uh, of things that he does. This is what uh, Jesus and the Apostle Paul calls the law of reaping and sowing. It is true that sometimes the bad things in our lives bad health poverty bad relationships sometimes these are the result of our the consequences of our actions uh, we eat incorrectly we we drink too much alcohol we smoke cigarettes and the consequence of that is is bad health uh, we do not uh, live on a budget. We overspend and we end up making foolish decisions with money. And we, the result, the consequence of that is poverty and debt and stress over money. So it is a fact that the, the law of reaping and sowing applies to Christians and non-Christians alike. However, it is a mistake to automatically assume the way Telephaz here is that every time something bad happens, like in Job's case, he's suffering 
boils all over his body from his head down to his the soles of his feet he's already had his family killed and his and his wealth taken away all these bad things and telephaz automatically assumes that it's because of the law of reaping and sowing sowing that job brought it upon himself because of his sin and his bad actions uh, but in this case telephaz and even job is not privy to what what we know because we read the first chapter of job we know about the encounter with satan and god and their conversation and the the uh, arrangement that they've made and that god it is not causing these things to happen to job as a consequence of his actions but that's the that's the message that telephaz is, is has for job okay brother Uh, I agree with you, Brother Luke, and uh, it seems like uh, we're just getting started here, too. Okay, back to you. All right, uh, so I, I want everybody to understand that, yes, uh, the law of reaping and sowing uh, is a fact, and we, sh we must fear it. We must understand that if we, if we conduct ourselves in certain ways, we're going to get certain consequences back. We reap what we sow. We sow bad things, we reap bad things. We sow good things, we reap good things. That's a fact. Cannot be avoided. But let's not assume that every time something bad happens, or even every time something good happens, it's necessarily God uh, you know, declaring it, decreeing it, and causing it. That's not the case at all. God is, we do not have the God of Calvinism. That's, that's not God at all. That is, a, that is a, a, a character that is even worse than the devil, the God of Calvinism, because that, that false God of Calvinism uh, is actually evil because he makes men sin and then he punishes them for it. So uh, that's not the God of the Bible. Uh, but does God uh, does the scriptures do tell us in the book of Hebrews that God when we put our faith in Jesus we become a child of God and and just like our own parents if you're a parent then you discipline your children hopefully as the Bible tells us we should discipline our children and if we don't discipline them when they misbehave for their own good then we are um, really in a form a way of neglect it's abuse it's we're, we're not treat, uh, correcting them and god is a, is a good father and he does chastise his children so if you're a child of god because you put your faith in jesus and you start getting out of line don't be surprised if god your father does chastise you and discipline you in some way uh, and then sometimes this, the bad things that happen is not God correcting us and disciplining us it is the idea that that uh, I'm not going to answer that I don't have to take that call it's, um, uh, so we have we have the possibility that God could be chastising and disciplining us we have the possibility that uh, the law of reaping and sowing has uh, come into into play, uh, but we don't uh, we don't have to we don't always know what's the cause of our problems. Uh, but Eliphaz, uh, he's assuming that all of Job's problems are are the result of the law of reaping and sowing that Job deserves it. So let's go on now to verse. Uh, where did I leave off? Um, Nineteen, I think. Nineteen. Okay. Okay. So, verse nineteen, chapter fifteen says, "To whom alone the land was given, and no stranger passed among them, corrupting the truth. The wicked man rides with pain all his days, and the number numbered are the years stored up for him. The ruthless one." A dreadful sound of terror is in his ears. While at peace and in a, in a time of prosperity, the destroyer comes upon him. The tent of the robber is not at peace. 
He does not believe that he will return out of the darkness for fear of being murdered, and he is destined for the sword of God's vengeance. So, again, it seems like Telephaz just does not have uh, the, the real understanding of God. See, and that's the way that I see a lot of Calvinists, too, is that they don't understand the, the character and nature of God. And uh, the, the true God of the Bible, uh, he has certain attributes and, and characteristics. And, and, and he is eternal. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. Uh, he's omnipresent. And his character is, is he keeps his promises. He cannot lie. He he is love, he's forgiving, he's merciful, he's just. Uh, he's not um, cruel and uh, unjust, as, as we find the, the God of Calvinism. The God of Calvinism is, is really a cruel, sadistic, um, unjust God that punishes people for something that he made them do. So... Um, when you understand who our God really is and his, uh, his uh, attributes and character, then, then you can really understand all these things in the scripture better. But Telephaz doesn't understand all the attributes and character of God. He, he thinks God is just strictly a mean, vengeful God that's just going to punish you, punish you, punish you all the time. And unfortunately, that's how much of the world today see, sees God. And that's one of the main objections that unbelievers have against the Bible is that they they say, well, what about that God of the Old Testament? You know, have you ever heard that brother that as an objection to, to believing in the Bible and, and, and in believing in Jesus, they bring up the God of the Old Testament. And they think he's just an angry God. All the time, Brother Luke, and it's always... Uh based on their lack of understanding of scriptures. That's for sure. Okay, so we've got um, Telephaz. That's really what he's doing here. Is um, He goes on and on. And it's amazing. It, it, these, these chapters in, uh, in Job, um, you don't really have a dialogue of, you know, one sentence from Job and another sentence from Telephaz. You have a diatribe uh, of coming from Telephaz. Uh, you know, just one thing after another, pointing the finger and accusing Job and saying that God is is uh, getting him. And, and he's really painting a picture of God as just being cruel and, and Job of being a sinner. Uh, and it goes on and on with a long speech. And then Job answers, and he gives a long speech back, defending himself uh, from these accusations. Uh, so this goes on and on, and we're, we'll continue now. Um, let me see. I think I'm, I finished with verse 22. So verse 23, he wanders about for food, saying, where is it? He knows that the day of darkness and destruction is already at hand. Distress and anxiety terrify him. They overpower him, power him like a, a king ready for battle because he has stretched out his hand against God and behaves arrogantly against the Almighty. Running and charging headlong against him with his ornamented and massive shield, for he has covered his faith with his fat, adding layers of fat to his thighs, giving himself up to pleasures. <laughs> Man, brother, what if, what if uh, I started talking to you like that and uh, going on and on and on, pointing the finger and, and, and accusing you and, and saying every problem in your life is because of you're such a bad person. How, how, how would you feel about me as a friend? Uh, wow, Brother Luke. Uh, I 
can't answer that question. Uh, and I hope to never have to answer a question like that. Okay, back to you. Yeah, yeah I've... Uh, I have received <laughs> kind of a few letters from people that said they were my friends. They were kind of like this. They go on and on accusing and, 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 and uh, condemning me, my character, and everything that uh, I do that they, they think is wrong. Uh, I can identify with this. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't true. And I've, uh, unfortunately, um, I have some lifelong friends. The, old, the, the oldest friendship I have, in ta my my oldest friend died a few years ago. Actually, it was it's been I guess nine years ago. He grew up in the house beat next door to me, and we were best friends like brothers. Uh, there's only two weeks that separated us. He was born two weeks after me. His name was Mark Ballinger, and we grew up like as close as brothers we were friends for our whole life and, and but eventually he he went off and unfortunately became an alcoholic and drank himself to death it was very very sad but he's one of the nicest people i've ever ever known in my life um, and now i still have some old friends one friend uh bill bill cook i've known him since i was about 12 years old he introduced himself to me in little league baseball uh, he hit a home run and he's rounding the bases, but he ran so slowly that he the fielders returned the ball to me and I'm the catcher and I'm I have the ball waiting at a home plate and he just rounding third, but he he would not stop because he he wanted that home run and he came in and ran over me. He was much bigger than me. He ran over me and just knocked me on my butt, but I still held on to the ball and he knocked me on my butt and said, "Hi, I'm Bill Cook." And he did that to me a couple of times that year. <laughs> and we've been close friends ever, ever since. And I have some close friends still from, from my college days that I, and I value their friendships. But the thing that I've found is that my oldest friendships uh, are not based upon Christianity. Um, it, it's very, very, I find it very, very sad that uh, many of the Christian friends that I have that I've met here in Las Vegas and that I've met on the internet um, These friendships haven't endured and it's 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 very uh, uh, It's a tragic thing, but I think I look at it like this The scriptures tell us that about Jesus Jesus says it says that even if we have no faith he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. That's Jesus. That's how faithful he is. He, he, he says, I will be your savior. I will give you eternal life in heaven. And even if you turn your back on me someday, I'll never turn my back on you. Now, that's the kind of friendship that is really pure and beautiful and perfect. And the friendships that I've found that, uh, on, on the Internet here, they haven't been like that. Uh, we, we haven't taken Jesus as our example and said, I am going to be a faithful friend. No matter what, I'm going to remain your friend. And uh, I've had a half dozen or a dozen of the closest friends on YouTube uh, get upset with me because I take a position on some doctrine or I refuse to participate in some uh, some witch hunt against someone else. And uh, they, then they turn against me. And these friendships, unfortunately, I've found have been very, very shallow. And it, 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 it's very sad that my conclusion is that my non-Christian-based friendships seem to be more solid and enduring than the Christian-based friendships. Uh, and this friendship here with Job and Eliphaz, uh, it's... It, with friends like that, brother, we, we wouldn't need any enemies. And if Eliphaz is supposed to be his friend, it come over there to help. And it, 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 it's just nothing but cruel indictments he's, he's, he's giving Job. Okay, brother, uh, any reaction to that? Um, well, I, brother Luke, uh, 
it's great just to hear you sit there and talk. So uh, I'm really loving it. And uh, Joe probably could have done a better job of picking out his friends, uh, maybe. What do you think? <laughs> well, uh, I, it, it, I think it's something that you just never know. I mean, sometimes uh, a friendship is, is uh, really, it's, it's not what you thought it was, and you discover it very soon. And it doesn't take long to identify that this is uh, not someone that's going to be a faithful friend, that, that's going to tr be there to encourage you and help you, and even when you disagree, not turn their back on you, even though you don't agree on something. So sometimes you discover that person's character very quickly. Other times it's it's you don't learn it for five or ten years. Um, so trying to pick our friends like that, I guess I don't know if personally I don't think I'm smart enough to to know. Obviously, I've been proven wrong numerous times, um, but I, I don't want it to be make me so cynical and bitter that I'm afraid to make new friends. I I, I will if you're watching now for the first time, and you know I invite you to be friends. I also more than that invite you to be a brother or sister in Christ by putting your faith in Jesus, which is the most important thing you'll ever do in your life. Um, but uh, friendship here in the book of Job is, uh, it's, it, it's a sad, sad thing, this, the so-called friends. Okay, I'll go on and read a little bit more of Aliphaz's condemnations of Job and humanity as a whole. Um, Verse 28, and he has lived in desolate, God-forsaken cities, in houses which no one should inhabit, which were destined to become heaps of ruins. He will not become rich, nor will his wealth endure, and his grain will not bend to the earth, nor his possessions be extended on the earth. Uh, he will not escape from darkness, fleeing disaster. The flame of God's wrath will wither his branch. And by the blast of his mouth, he will go away. Let him not trust in vanity, uh, emptiness, uh, futility, and be led astray. For emptiness will be his reward for such living. Uh, it will be fulfilled while he li still lives, and his branch will not be green, but shall wither away. He will fail to bring his grapes to maturity, leaving them to wither unnourished on the vine, and will cast off blossoms and fail to bring forth fruit like the olive tree. For the company of the godless is barren, and fire consumes the tents of bribery, wrong, and injustice. And they conceive mischief and bring forth wickedness, and their in, inmost soul prepares deceit and fraud. Um, Okay, so there's another chapter of Eliphaz's tirade, his diatribe against Job. And I'm expecting the next chapter, I haven't looked ahead, but expecting the next chapter to be Job's response. And that's the way this book is going back and forth. Uh, the friends, the so-called friends, point the finger, condemning Job and, and uh, saying it's all your fault. And then Job pleading his case, saying, I'm, I'm innocent. I, don't, I, I didn't do anything to deserve this. Um, so that's, that's what we've seen over the last few chapters. Uh, before we go on, brother, what's your reaction to Eliphaz in this chapter? Okay, uh, brother Luke. Um, it's very heavy-handed with condemnation. And uh, it's almost as if Eliphaz is uh, condemning me because I am guilty of all those things, but Job wasn't. And I have received the forgiveness and the grace and the love from God. And Job did also, but uh, it didn't come right away for Job. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Yeah, uh, to me, I'm, I believe the main thing that I'm getting out of this, and I, I hope that uh, those people watching us now and watch this video in the future 
will understand that just because you read something in the Bible doesn't mean that it's true. Now, that you have people like Eliphaz uh, and his friends that they are saying things and they're very eloquent. Uh, I made a, a I made a, uh, a video titled Lordship Salvation Liars. I made it several years ago, and I, and I talked about some of the most famous, eloquent, um, admired preachers who are preaching the false doctrine of Lordship Salvation. And some of them are just silver-tongued devils. They speak beautifully. And they're very persuasive. They're, they're like this Eliphaz. I mean, he has a way with words, doesn't he? And it just sounds really beautifully written. And yet what he's saying is false. It's a false premise because he's, he's making the assumption and putting forth and decreeing that Job's problems are the result of his being a sinner. And we know that's not true. Just read the first two chapters uh, of Job and you'll understand that what really caused the problem is not Job being a sinner. So uh, I think that uh, I made another video titled uh, Why Most Christians Make Me Sick. Now, gosh, it seems like some of the things I'm saying today and that I've said in the past, you might say, well, Brother Luke, you seem like a real jerk. You know, here you're, you're talking about all, all these uh, uh friends that have uh, not been faithful and you're talking about how most Christians make you sick and, um, and lordship salvation liars. I mean, I happen to be bringing up right now some of the harsh things that I've said and, and that I've, I've uh, put forth on, on YouTube. Probably 99% of what I do on YouTube is talking about Jesus and salvation, the free gift, the love of God. But sometimes I've had to address problems that are you know you have to say the hard, the hard truth um but the uh, the idea that uh something is beautifully stated or something is even it's in the bible that's in the bible well it's in the bible but we're not supposed to believe it as a doctrine it's just showing us history, what happened. This is a true story, what happened to Job. And, and Telephaz was a real person, and he really said these things to Job. And they were cruel and mean-spirited and, and wrong and, and, and mis misapplied. We're not supposed to accept that as doctrine. So that's what I'm hoping that we're learning here, is that sometimes we got to differentiate what just because something's in the Bible doesn't mean it's, 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 it should be our doctrine. Uh, an, an example that Joe Byron gave me a couple of years ago was the Sadducees. You had these two sects of uh, very religious Jewish people, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the Pharisees are really legalistic, uh, religious hypocrites. That, that's how Jesus described them. And the Sadducees are people who denied that there would ever be a bodily resurrection in the future. Uh, so the Sadducees, here, here they are, it's in the Bible. It says there is no resurrection, and that's what the Sadducees say. But that's not a fact because Jesus denounced it, and all the rest of the scriptures denounce it and say, no, there is a, a resurrection to look forward to. So we have to understand that you know we can pull something out of the scriptures and, and, and uh, say that's in the Bible, but it might be one of the lies that's in the Bible. Satan tells lies in the Bible, like, like uh, the first lie ever told, the very first lie ever told that we find in the Bible. Satan told Adam and Eve, God said, if you eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will die that day. That's not true. If you eat from that tree, you will attain the knowledge of good and evil, and you will be like God. You will not die. That's what Satan said. He contradicted God. And Adam and Eve, the first sin, was not eating the fruit. The first sin was believing Satan and not believing God. It was the sin of unbelief. And then after they did not believe God, then they acted and ate. 
and 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 uh, that was also a sin. But um, so that's that's the main thing I think that we need to understand from these uh, the things we're reading from Telephaz and his Job's, Job's other friends. I'm going to go on to chapter 16, but let me give you an answer, a chance to respond to any of that. Okay, Brother Luke, uh, so far so good. Uh, let's just continue on. Okay. I'm going to read chapter 16. I'm going to go read it in the KJV first. And, and if you're following along now, and uh, as I read the KJV, if it makes perfect sense to you, then um, good for you. You're, you're smarter than me. Uh, I'm finding that a lot of the New Testament writings that I read in the KJV, probably 98% of it is really clear and easy for me. But when I'm reading Job and some of the stuff in Proverbs too, uh, it's just really hard for me to understand it. Uh, and if it's hard for me, being an educated person, I imagine for many of you, it may also be hard. So that's why I find it helpful to look at the Amplified or some other modern translation, and it can be helpful. But I believe that we should look at it first in the KJV. So that's what we'll do now. Chapter 16. Let me see. I can get the computer to go to it. <clears throat> it's not reacting. Okay, here it is. It's a little slow. Okay, I got it now. All right, chapter 16 says, uh, hmm. okay, um, <clears throat> then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things, miserable comforters are ye all. Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldeneth thee that thou answereth? <coughs> I also could speak as ye do. If your soul were in my soul's stead, I could heap up words against you and shake mine head again at you. But I would strengthen you with my mouth, and the moving of my lips should assuage your grief. Though I speak, my grief is not assuaged, and though I forbear, what am I eased? But now he hath made me weary. Thou hast made desolate all my company, and thou hast filled me with wrinkles, which is a witness against me, and my leanness rising up in me beareth witness to my face. He teareth me in his wrath, who hateth me, he gnasheth upon me with his teeth. Mine enemy sharpeneth his eyes upon me. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten upon the cheek reproachfully. They have gathered themselves together against me. God hath delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, but he hath broken me asunder. He hath also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his mark. His archers compass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder and doth not spare. He poureth out my gall upon the ground. He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin and defiled my horn in the dust. My face is foul with weeping, and on my eyelids is the shadow of death. Not for any injustice in mine hands, also my prayer is pure. O earth, cover not thou my blood, and let my cry have no place. Also now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my record is on high. My friends scorn me, but mine eye poureth out tears unto God. Oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleaded for his neighbor. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. 
Wow. Man, that is hard to read. I mean, I mean, brother, let's put yourself in Job's place here for a moment. Okay. You've had your family killed. You've had your wealth destroyed, your cattle, and much of what your property is, is, is ruined and lost it all. And you have boils, painful boils on the soles of your feet, all over your whole body, up to your soles of your head, and you're suffering physically. And then you have three of your friends come to visit you, and one after another is scorning you and accusing you. What would be worse? All those losses, all that suffering, or the final, the final insult, your so-called friends, the way they're treating it. Uh, Brother Luke, I just can't do it. I just can't see myself in Job's shoes. Uh, okay, but I, I really like what he said about his friends uh, when he said, you are miserable comforters, all of you. Uh, that's a classic right there. Okay, back to you. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things, you know, I'm... I don't know if I'm necessarily doing the right thing. I often, uh, uh, as I reading and studying and, and teaching the scriptures, um, I can relate to just so much of it. And I think that's part of the reason that we have it. And so that we, it's not just so that we understand history and what, what has transpired in the past. It's lessons to learn that can be applied to our lives and re reflection our own lives to see how, uh, yeah, how when, when we ex have these kinds of experiences, you know, uh, that we're not the only ones. We're not the only ones that, that, that suffer from sickness and bad things and friend friendships that go wrong. And we're, um, so I, I have not been shy about exposing things in my life, personal things about my life, my experiences, uh, good and bad, and because it, I can relate. As I read these things, I relate and see, wow, I can understand that. These kinds of things have happened in my life. So, uh, Brother, uh, can you identify it all? You said you can't put yourself in Job's shoes. But have there been times when you've had horrible suffering from any, anything like Job, not maybe on that scale, and friends like Job's friends? Well, Brother Luke, uh, the things I suffered, I was very young and wasn't aware of what was going on. But uh, after that, I've lived a pretty much sheltered life. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to read this now, verse by verse here in the Amplified. I, I was actually pretty pleased with uh, how that came out in the KJV it seemed to be very easy to understand. But I, I, I think that uh, it'll be worth going through a second time more slowly in the Amplified. Uh, it says, the title that we have in the Amplified on this is, is Job says friends are sorry comforters. <laughs> All right, verse 1, chapter 16. Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things, wearisome and miserable comforters are you all. Is there no end to your futile words of wind? Or what plagues you so much that you so boldly answer me like this? 
let me stop for a moment here and talk about comforting. Um, I've talked a little bit about uh, unfaithful friends that I've, I, I've had, but I also want everybody to know that um, every, every so often, uh, someone will send me a private message. Um, or maybe I'll get a telephone call. And uh, someone tells me that uh, something that is, is just really uplifting and encouraging. Um, I've had people say, Brother Luke, I've, I've, I've watched your videos for years. And, and uh, I want you to know, I've learned so much. It's been so helpful to me. And I, I just want to thank you and, and tell you how much it all means to me. And yet that person has been completely anonymous for years. They've never made a comment. I don't recognize their, their username. They've never had any kind of interaction at all, except they've been watching. And then they finally, they took a moment and said, I want you to know uh, that what you've done has, has value for me. So these are encouragers. And I've talked before about the ministry of encouragement. There's a, one of the saints in the Bible, uh, uh, Barnabas, who was the co-worker of the Apostle Paul. Um, uh, his name means Barnabas is son of encouragement. And so the idea of being an encourager, it is a ministry and it is a gift. And uh, uh, those of you who say, Brother Luke, I could never go out in public and stand on a corner and, and preach like that. Well, you don't have to, you're not, you're not called to do that. Uh, I could, Brother Luke, I could never make videos or, or participate in a, in a hangout. I'm too shy or something. And, and I, I, I don't know enough or something, but you don't have to, we're not all called to teach. Uh, but, but what you can do and, and, and what many people have been doing is this ministry of encouragement and giving comfort. And right now, uh, I could get a phone call any moment from my wife who's uh, back East because her mother is uh, in hospice care now and she's, she, she may be leaving any minute. It's reached that point. And my wife and her family, you know, they need comfort. It's, it's a horrible thing to uh, see your mother 85 years old and suffering for months and months and slowly withering away to, into death. And when, when people like that, someone who can comfort them, someone who can encourage them, and, and maybe somebody who can, does nothing but just weeps along with them. Is that, that's a ministry too. And there's a great, great value in that. So Job is, he's, he's heartbroken. He, he's saying, what kind of comforter are you? I need comforting. And yet what you're doing is the complete opposite. All right, I'm going to go on, but first, if you want to comment on that, brother. Uh, that's very encouraging, Brother Luke. Thank you. Okay. Uh, verse 4, he says, um, I also could speak like you if you were in my place. I could compose and join words together against you and, and shake my head at you. But instead, I could strengthen and encourage you with the words of my mouth and the consolation and solace of my lips would soothe your suffering and lessen your anguish. See, Job has... So, so much to offer us this, this story about this man and his experiences. And, uh, you know, 
he's he's crushed and then his friends pile on and make it worse and he said yeah I, if I, things were reversed i could act like you but i wouldn't i wouldn't do that to you but what job would do is try to comfort them he would not be condemning them and making things worse They have a subtitle here in the Amplified. It says, Job says God shattered him. See, Job, Job is still uh, also misinformed. He does not have all the information. Job is not privy to the, the meeting that Satan had with God. And uh, he doesn't understand that uh, this is Satan doing it to him. Uh, and God is allowing it. But God is not doing it to him as a punishment because he's a, a sinner. That's not it at all. Uh, so God just, at this point, Job does not understand what's going on. But uh, in verse 6, it says, If I speak to you, miserable comforters, my pain is not relieved. And if I refrain from speaking, what pain or anguish leaves me? So he's saying, what's the point? Why should I even bother, uh, you know, defending myself and and, uh, and carrying on this conversation with you any further? Verse 7, but now God has exhausted me. Oh, Lord, you, oh, Lord, have destroyed all my family and my household. You have taken a firm hold on me and have shriveled me up. It has become a witness against me and my leanness and infirmity rises up as evidence against me. It testifies to my face about my guilt. Uh, I wish Job, I wish Job had to reach that point where it's bad enough, everything has happened to him and then these friends condemning him too. But he doesn't understand. He thinks God is doing it to him. And, and it is, he's been convinced that in the beginning, he says, I, I'm righteous. I haven't done anything wrong to deserve this. And then finally, because of the pounding and pounding from his friends and accusing him, he says, oh, maybe I have. Maybe I'm guilty. Maybe I deserve this and God's doing it to me. That would be like, like another nail in the coffin of his despair to think not only have all these things happening and my friends are being cruel to me and yet uh, maybe I do deserve it. God is doing this to me. Verse nine, his wrath has torn me and hunted me down. He has gnashed at me with his teeth my adversary sharpens his glaze and glares with piercing eyes at me. They have gaped at me with their mouths. With contempt, they have struck me on the cheek. They massed themselves together and conspired against me. God hands me over to criminals and tosses me headlong into the hands of the wicked. I was living at ease, but he crushed me and broke me apart. And he has seized me by the neck and has shaken me to pieces. He has also set me up as his target. His arrows surround me. He pierces my kidneys, my vital organs without mercy. He pours out my gall on the ground. He attacks me and making wound after wound, he runs at me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth over my skin as a sign of mourning, and I have defiled my horn, symbol of strength, in the dust. My face is red and swollen with weeping, and on my eyelids is the shadow of death. My eyes are dimmed. Although there is no violence or wrongdoing in my hands, and my prayer is pure, So here, verse 17, 
he is blaming God, but he's at verse 17, he's, he's saying, I haven't done wrong. So it seems that he believes that God's doing it to him, but he's saying, I still don't see what I've done wrong. I haven't done anything wrong. He has, he's, he's at a loss. First, he says, I haven't done anything wrong. And then in the middle of the chapters, he says, maybe I have done something wrong. And now he's at, he's at the point where he says, I haven't done anything wrong. Verse 18, O earth, do not cover my blood, and let there be no resting place for my cry, for it will cease being heard. Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my advocate, who touches and testifies for me, is on high. I find that very interesting. Verse 19. advocate uh what does that say how does that read in the kjv verse 19 brother okay uh also now behold my witness is in heaven and my record is on high hmm. even now behold my witness is in heaven and my advocate who vouches and testifies for me is on high uh, this this is a, 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 a Christian doctrine here in verse 19. Job says, even now, he believes that he has a witness in heaven, an advocate who's vouching for him, just as I do, just as you do, Brother Eric. We find all this Christianity in the book of Job. Verse 20. My friends are scoffers who ridicule. My eye pours out tears to God. Oh, that a man would mediate and plead with God for me, just as a man mediates and pleads with his neighbor and friend. For when a few years are past, I shall go the way of no return. All right, I think that's a good place to end for today. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me. I was choking there for a second. <coughs> uh, all right, brother. I'd like for you to uh, just, in your own words, brother, kind of sum up what you, you got from this study today as an overview. Okay, uh, Eliphaz uh, started it off by uh, laying down some real heavy condemnation towards Job, and uh, so much so I started feeling condemned myself, and uh, I do that, that's just me. Uh, okay, <laughs> now, uh, Job answered back. And Job standing his ground, and uh, as you pointed out, uh, Job introduced uh, several times the doctrines of salvation, which are more or more like precepts of salvation. Uh, in verse nineteen and verse twenty-one, as well. Uh, Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. All right. Um, now, I made a video yesterday, um, kind of an announcement that uh, these live broadcasts, I'm going to attempt to do them daily. Uh, and I, I've been doing them for a couple of years now either one or two a week. And, and I, I have, I think about 140 of them that I've done so far. 
but time permits me to do them more often. And I, I, I want to do them daily unless something per, uh, prevents it. Like yesterday, I had an opportunity to, <clears throat> to meet my son for lunch and visit with him. So I chose to do that rather than doing a broadcast. So sometimes I'll have something that uh, comes up that will not allow a live broadcast. But, but normally I'm going to do these uh, daily at beginning at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so as I do them, I, I think that probably the time frame I'm going to probably allow for them now is an hour rather than two hours, since I'm going to be doing them more frequently. <clears throat> So we, we will end this study on Job now, but, but I want to take a few minutes to emphasize what, um, since the Preacher YouTube channel is really the main focus, and which is the, 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 the ministry that uh, I'm, I'm called to, which is evangelism. I, I want to always lift up the name of Jesus. And I, I want to draw you to Jesus. Uh, Jesus said, just as the Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And Scripture says that he, he was using that as a reference to, to point to his being lifted up on a cross when he was crucified. And Jesus said, in that in that manner, I will draw all men to myself. So more than anything else, even though we learn so much from the book of Job and the book of Proverbs and all the other Bible studies that we do, more than anything else, we want to talk about Jesus. We want you to know who he is, what he's done for you, why you need him. That's really what my ministry is all about and this YouTube channel is about. So I'll tell you basically that Jesus is not just a man. He is God. That's what the scriptures tell us, that he is eternal, God Almighty, who became a man named Jesus. And the reason he became a man was so that he could die for our sins. He had to become a man in order to die. Now, the reason he died for our sins is because man was in a futile situation. We could not go to heaven because we're sinners and we couldn't remedy the situation ourselves. Man tried to remedy it throughout the millennia. Even today, man's trying to remedy this himself. He's trying to fix his sin problem by saying, I'll stop sinning, I'll repent, I'll do good deeds, but it doesn't work. Romans 10, 3 says that man is trying to get his own righteousness to please God, but that's not God's way. God's way is us accepting we are unrighteous and we need the righteousness of Christ. So when God knew that we we're in this hopeless, helpless situation, and he decided he would solve our problem on his own. And if you can understand, as the scriptures say, that uh, uh, if we confess our sin, our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Uh, he, he understand that you are a sinner like me. We all sin. Some people sin more than others. Some people have different varieties of sins. But the fact is, we are all sinners to a certain extent, and therefore we cannot be with God. But Jesus died for our sins, so now. Our sins are forgiven and we can have a relationship with God and go to heaven provided that we do this through Jesus Christ. Jesus died for our sins, but it didn't end there. After three days in the tomb, he raised himself from the dead in order to prove he has power over life and death. And that resurrection should give you confidence that Putting your faith in Jesus is the right thing to do. If he can raise himself from the dead as a sign that he will raise you from the dead, then you can trust him. So that's what we want you to do. That's what you need to do. That's the one thing you must do. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Stop trying to work your way to heaven through your own methods. 
trying to get there through personal merit, throw up your hands and defeat and say, I, I understand I'm it's helpless. I can't do it. Therefore, I'm going to appeal to Jesus instead and trust him to get me to heaven. And when you put your faith in him, he gives you eternal life. He gives you the Holy Spirit of God living inside you forever. He gives you the promise, the guarantee of going to heaven. I hope you do it. Brother, I'm letting you say goodbye to everybody, and then we'll end the broadcast. Well, thank you very much for having me here, Brother Luke. And I pray that all your viewers will uh, take it to heart uh, that uh, they need a Savior in Jesus Christ. Okay, back to you. All right. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody. Brother Eric, thank you for participating. And I, uh, I hope you join me uh, daily, 1 p.m. Pacific time for these live broadcasts. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.